eating a little bit before bed. I mean, it makes sense that that would lull you to sleep, right? But you have this one side that is just saying, no, you can't do that. If you eat before bed, it disrupts your circadian cues and you're not gonna sleep well at all. But on the other side, playing devil's advocate here, like eating a little bit before bed might help you out, but there's very, very distinct nuance there. So does having a little bit of protein before bed help you sleep? The answer is, it all depends on your situation. See, there was an interesting study published in Advances in Nutrition that found when subjects in this particular case were in like a 16% protein deficit, that is when their sleep was disrupted. So in essence, it wasn't so much about their caloric needs, it was more about like what they needed in the way of protein. So a lot of times what we'll notice is that, okay, if you're deficient in calories or you're decreasing calories because you're dieting, you have these increases in adrenaline and noradrenaline and, and uh, just catecholamines that keep you awake because you, well, I guess in essence, you're kind of starving so your body just doesn't sleep as well. Okay, well, is it the calories or is it the protein demand? Right? Is it the need for protein? Well, here we have to look at two additional studies, and these studies look at very similar things. They found that in isocaloric states, like when calories are equal, if your protein needs are not met, you don't seem to sleep well. But above and beyond meeting your protein requirements, it didn't improve sleep. So in this particular case, it's like having 20% protein versus 30% protein didn't make a difference, but compared to like maybe 10 or 15%, it did. So the point in this is saying like if you're training harder and your demand is higher and you need more protein because you had more muscle protein breakdown, perhaps it's less about the calories coming in and more about getting yourself to a stable protein level. So sometimes what it is is if people have like a little bit of chicken or like a little Greek yogurt or something before bed, it helps them sleep because maybe it got them up to that threshold where they're a little closer to break even at the protein level. Some of this is somewhat hypothetical based upon like extrapolating data from research, but I'll tell you my experience. When I train hard, when I increase my training intensity and I'm decreasing calories, I better be keeping my protein high, otherwise my sleep will suffer. So a lot of times what I'll do is I'll have like just 0% fat yogurt. I'll just get organic fat-free yogurt usually Greek yogurt, obviously, because it's higher protein. And what I'll do is in this particular case, I'll put a scoop of protein in it. Please hear me out on this, because I know I might catch some flack for it. But I'll put like a scoop of plant-based protein powder in it. The reason I do that is because I know that animal-based protein is a more abundant amino acid profile, higher levels of tryptophan, but with plant-based protein, what we do know is that the ratio of tryptophan two large neutral amino acids is better, which means you're gonna have more available tryptophan to convert into serotonin and melatonin and help you sleep. The protein I use, just FYI, you don't have to use this one. I'm just suggesting it because it's the one I use. I use Sun Warriors Active line, so I use their active protein because it's a combination with pumpkin protein, which I think is a very, very well-rounded plant-based protein, and it's a really interesting blend. They also have digestive enzymes and probiotics in it as well because one of the biggest issues we face when we are trying to sleep is the digestive load, so the enzymes potentially help with that. I find I try whey, I do these things and they work, but I find I feel a little bit better when I use that active line. So again, just a recommendation, but I did put a link down below that will save you 20% off if you wanna try it out. Again, they have chocolate, they have vanilla, really good flavors that taste not like typical chalky, plant-based, weird protein powders. Don't get me wrong, I'm not anti-animal-based proteins. I just feel like in this case, it works well. So that link is down below in the description. Again, try it out. Very, very interesting. It's a perfect protein to have before bed just because of the digestibility, in my humble opinion. So that link is down below. The reason that I like to keep it lower fat in this case is A, I don't wanna increase calories. I'm just trying to increase protein. Remember that fat has nine calories per gram, protein has four. It makes way more sense for me to just jack up my protein a little bit, satisfy that biological need, if you wanna call it that, without trying to jack up calories. The other thing is, fat requires a fair bit of digestion, okay? And when we're trying to sleep, this digestion process, it doesn't fatigue us. It doesn't like make us wanna sleep. It might make us tired as far as like energy, but it doesn't make us want to go to sleep, okay? So even though you feel like going to bed with a full stomach is getting you good restful sleep, you're getting these signals that are kind of telling your brain, be awake, be awake, be awake, and you're not really designed to do that. But one of the things that I think is so important, if you plan to do this, and I talked about this in another video, if you plan to do this, it's so unbelievably important that you slowly increase your protein 
in the morning first and increase your calories in the morning to accommodate this extra protein in the evening. So what I mean is I don't want you to just say, do exactly what you're doing now and then add this extra protein an hour before bed. I want you to say, okay, if I'm adding an extra meal, so to speak, I need to consolidate more calories towards the morning so that that meal in the evening isn't just kind of stacking on with already high calories in the evening. So it's almost like you need to take a little bit away from dinner, take maybe you know 20% of the calories from dinner, staple it on to your breakfast, and then allow the new calories to kind of come in from protein only, separate and apart. So let's say you're eating 400 calories for dinner, randomly. Let's take 100 calories of that and put it onto breakfast. Okay, so that's all equal. Now the only additional calories you have coming in are coming from very lean, easy to digest protein that might help you sleep. I think you'll notice this, especially if you're an active person. So remember, it's okay to occasionally eat at night. It's not gonna disrupt everything. And if it works for you, sleeping is better than not sleeping no matter when you're eating. I'll see you tomorrow.